This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Hi everyone, it's Jennifer from Fiberflux. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to crochet this beautiful indigo blush shawl. This is a very simple shawl made of just some double crochet stitches and some chains. We're gonna just be doing a simple a uh, little increase in the middle and on the sides and it will make this lovely triangle shawl shape. So these are, like I said, double crochets and chains. And we're gonna be using a yarn cake, which I'll talk a little bit about in just a minute. But the color, the gradients that you see, these gentle color changes are all done all for you. So really simple stitches, easy color changes. So this is a very relaxing project. You can just kind of settle into it and uh, work on it. So we're going to learn how, we're going to actually be starting, if you flip the triangle over like this, we're going to be starting in the center here and working our way up and out. Okay, and I'm going to show you how to do that every step of the way. Now the finished dimensions of our piece are from the top edge of our triangle, the long top part is about 71 inches across. Now from the bottom point of our shawl, working straight up is about 33 inches. And then from the bottom point here, straight out on either side is 56 inches. Now with that being said, um, I used every bit of the yarn cake that I had, just a few yards left that I couldn't get another row out of. But um, you can easily change the dimensions of your shawl by simply working more or less rows. So the more rows you work, your shawl will get taller in height, but also wider to wrap around you. And on the opposite side, if you work less rows, your shawl will be smaller because you, you could do like a shawlette or something like that, just a little neck wrap. So let's get started. For this project, you'll need a pair of scissors, a tapestry needle, a tape measure is helpful if you're after a certain size. And we're gonna be using a four millimeter G crochet hook. This is my Furls Odyssey hook. I'll put the link down below as well as a coupon code if you'd like to get one for yourself. This is the pink Odyssey. Um, the yarn that we'll be using is this gorgeous yarn cake that as you can see has a ton of yarn in it. This is called Sultan Deluxe. Um, it is a cotton yarn from Hobie and special thanks to Hobie for sending this. And I will also put a link down below for this yarn as well. The color we will be using is number 29. And you can see that here. Um, it's also, all of their yarn has a, a color number and name. The name of this is called Blue Bell. Now the yarn weight is a number two fine. And each cake of this, as you can see, it's a big, yarn cake is 1,093 yards or 1,000 meters. So there's a ton of yarn on here and it has a like a blush pink center and it kind of works out to be like a plum and then like a steel blue and then this like deep indigo color. So it's a really pretty one. Um, if you hop on over using the link down below, you can see all the other really pretty yarn cakes that they have as well. And one thing I love about their yarn cakes is that they have this tab they put an easy, now I've pulled this out and I was playing with it a little bit, but when you get it, there's a easy start tab. It even says easy start and you just pull it. No um, like fuss and it's just super easy to use, which I just love. Now, if you need to substitute yarn, um, look for a number two fine on the yarn weight scale. You can see on the yarn label when you look that um, it's a little like yarn ball um, symbol with a number in it. We're gonna use the number two fine. And then this yarn in particular recommends a US E through G hook, okay? So um, just look for the number two fine and you'll, you'll be just fine. We're also gonna give some um, multiples on this yarn as well, or the pattern rather, so that if you need to um, use a different yarn or hook or what have you, you can adjust the multiples accordingly for what what you are using. I know a lot of you like to use yarn that's in your stash and that's awesome. So let's get started. Okay, so like I mentioned before, we have this little tab on here. When you're ready to begin working with your yarn, you just wanna snip it off. Before we move on to our written pattern and learn how to make this gorgeous shawl, let's take a moment to talk about our sponsor today, Skillshare. 
Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for anyone who loves learning and wants to explore their creativity and learn new skills. Invest in yourself and your personal growth. If you have a specific skill you're trying to learn, Skillshare is the perfect place to start. From photography and illustration to graphic design, freelancing, and lots more, you can find classes that will match your goals and interests. The class I tried with Skillshare was called Revolutionary Self-Care, Embrace, Nurture, and Grow Your Authentic Self with Chidera. And I learned so much and it was so interesting and the instructor was very engaging and fun. Explore the Skillshare library completely free for one month. The first 1,000 people to use the link will get one month free trial of Skillshare. You can explore the entire library and the link is down below. It's the very first line in the info box. So definitely check that out. Thanks Skillshare. So we have our yarn and our hook. So to begin, we're gonna put a slip knot on our hook. So leave yourself a little tail Wrap the yarn around your fingers to make a loop. Bring the yarn behind the loop, reach in with your hook, bring up a loop and tighten. We're going to create a ring that we're gonna be working our stitches into. Now this will be worked flat in rows, but the beginning will be creating a ring just to get us started. So what we wanna do is to chain four. So to make a chain, let me just zoom in a tiny bit more. To make a chain, wrap the yarn around the hook and bring it through the loop. That's one, two, three and four. And then what we're gonna do is join in the chain farthest from our hook to create a ring. So go all the way to the end, that first chain you made, insert the hook into that chain, bring up a loop. Now bring that loop through the loop that's already on your hook. And we now have a little ring. Now, some of you ask me about the magic ring. If you prefer to use the magic ring, definitely do that instead. It's totally fine. Okay, so for row one, what we're gonna do is, and then I like to open the ring up a little bit, and then you can kind of hold this tail along the edge and it'll weave it in as we work that first row. So what we're gonna do for row one is to chain three. One, two, three. And then what we're gonna do is into the center of the ring, we're gonna work two double crochet, chain two, three double crochet. This chain three we just did is gonna count as one of our double crochets. So into the center of the ring, we'll work two double crochets to start. To make a double crochet, wrap the yarn around the hook, insert it into the center of the ring and bring up a loop. You'll have three loops on the hook. Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the first two loops. Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the last two loops. And then work one more double crochet into the center of the ring. And when you have small yarn like this, like thinner yarn and a small hook, just go nice and slow if you need to. And then what we're gonna do is chain two, one and two, and then work three more double crochets. I'm still holding this tail. Work three more double crochets into the center of the ring. So wrap the yarn around the hook, insert it into the ring, bring up a loop, and work your double crochet. That's one. two, and three, just like that, okay? So this is the beginnings of a little tiny triangle. It doesn't look like much right now, but it will as we build more rows. Okay, so let's move on to row two. For row two, we're gonna chain three and turn. One, two, three, and just kind of flip your work over. And then what we're gonna do in the very first stitch, so see this loop at the base of the chain that we just made, that little loop right there, that very first stitch, we're gonna work two double crochets. So one double crochet, and two double crochet, just like that. And then what we're gonna do is work a double crochet in each of the next two stitches. These will be the side stitches of our triangle. So work a double crochet in that next stitch that you see, just like that. And a double crochet into the next stitch that you see. And now, if you remember from our previous row, we have a little bit of an opening here because in the last row we did a chain two. So in that chain two space, that's gonna eventually be like a point of our triangle. 
We're going to work in this corner space, it's called in the pattern. We're going to work two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet. So in that chain two space, we're gonna work two double crochet, one and two, just like that, and then chain two, one, two. And in that same chain two space, that same space we're working in, two more double crochet. So one and two, all in that same corner space, okay? Now we're gonna go back down the side of our triangle and we're gonna work a double crochet in each of these next two stitches. So work a double crochet in that first stitch that you come to, one, double crochet in there, whoops, and then a double crochet into the next stitch, just like that. And then to finish up our row, what we're gonna do is work three double crochets in our turning chain space. Now it might be kind of like smushed along the side, but if you sort of open it up, you can see our turning chain from the previous row and that creates a little space here, okay? So right in that turning chain space, work three double crochet. One, two, and three, just like that. Okay, so row two is complete. Now basically, um, we have learned, let me just kind of lay it down so you can see. We've learned the basics of our little triangle. It's a little baby triangle right now. So let's do row three together. It's gonna be the same concept, except we're just gonna have more side stitches. We're just gonna kind of repeat what we did, but um, I wanna show you because we're gonna be adding side stitches. And as your triangle grows wider, and taller, you're gonna have more side stitches. You're gonna do the same thing for each of these peaks, this corner space. You're gonna do the same thing for the sides, but each time this slope here and here will grow. So you'll have more side stitches at for each row, okay? All right, let's try this again. What we're gonna do is chain three once again. We're just gonna kind of walk through it and just so you can see the more side stitches. So we're gonna chain three. One, two, three, and turn. If you get confused about how to turn, we have this tail, that's the center. So you're just gonna kinda use that as a guide when you flip it over like that, okay? Now remember, once again, at the base of this chain, that very first stitch, that loop at the base of your chain, you're going to work two double crochets into that stitch, because remember that chain three counted as a double crochet. So double crochet, and double crochet, Okay, now let's work some side stitches. In every side stitch that you see, all the way up till you get to that space, you're gonna work a double crochet in each one of those side stitches, okay? So that first stitch you come to, double crochet. Next stitch, double crochet. Next stitch, double crochet. Next stitch, Double crochet, see how there's more side stitches this time because our triangle is growing. Next stitch, double crochet. And that last stitch before you get to that corner space, work a double crochet. You can see how it's growing, okay? Next, what we're gonna do is as we come up to this corner space, we're gonna do the same thing we did before. Two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet. So right in that corner space, that chain two space from the previous row, two double crochet, one, and let me just get a little bit more yarn here, one and two, right into that chain two corner space, and then we're gonna chain two. One, two, and then in that same space, work two more double crochets. One, whoops, my yarn split. Let me just back up there. Work your two double crochets in that corner space. So one and two, just like that. 
Okay, now what I like to do, sometimes when you work that area here, it sort of like overlaps that first stitch that you're gonna come to. So I like to kind of scoot things over and now you can see that stitch really well, okay? So we're gonna work a double crochet in each of the stitches going down the other side of the triangle. So double crochet in that first stitch you come to after that corner space. Double crochet in the next stitch. Double crochet into the next stitch. Double crochet into the next stitch. Double crochet into the next stitch. We're getting towards the end here. One more stitch, work a double crochet into that next stitch, just like that. Okay, now to finish up our row, remember once again, in that turning chain space, it's gonna be kinda of laying on its side here, work three double crochets in that turning chain space. So one, two, and three, okay? So let me just show you where we're at here. Um, I like to, let me move my hook so you can see here. I like to, when I complete each row, I like to kind of like straighten things out, sharpen up that point a little bit, and just kind of get it all straightened out. And as you can see, our triangle is growing. It looks really pretty. So what you're gonna do for the rest of your piece, the rest of this, uh, if you're doing a yarn cake like I am, this whole yarn cake, we're just gonna keep adding rows and rows and rows until either you run out of yarn or your shawl is as large as you would like it to be. Now we talked about sizing earlier in the video, but you're just gonna keep repeating the rows that we just did over and over and over again until your shawl is as large as you would like it to be or until you run out of yarn. Now I'm really excited to see this triangle play out in all these beautiful colors. So I'm gonna keep going with mine. And then when we rejoin, we're gonna learn how to finish off our shawl and do a little bit of finish work. Just working those last couple of stitches on that very last row of our piece. And now we are finished. So what we're gonna do now, and I'm gonna open this up to show you how beautiful it is in just a minute. Um, I don't have enough yarn to quite make another row. So we're gonna go ahead and fasten everything off. So what you'll want to do is just cut the yarn, wrap the yarn around your hook, and just bring it through the loop and tighten. Then grab your tapestry needle, and if you need to give it a twist because of all the little threads if you're using a similar yarn as I am, then what you're going to do is just take your tail and you're just going to go, because this is reversible, try to stay in the middle part of those stitch loops just so it uh, blends nicely, and try to stay in this same color area as um, your tail, okay? When you weave in the end, it changes and gets a little lighter as you move down, uh, for this one in particular. So just try to stay in that general color area so that your tail will disappear nicely. And I'm just gonna come back in the other direction to just help that tail lock itself into place. And then we can grab our scissors and give it just a tiny little snip and our tail is gone. Now if you have any other tails, go ahead and weave those in as well. I have a couple more here. Okay, we've woven in all of our ends and let's just open this up and look at our handiwork because it is just absolutely lovely. So we started here, but it was upside down. This will be the part you wrap around your neck, but we started with this lovely soft purpley pink color and then it gradiated down into this deep indigo. So I hope you enjoyed this project. I found it to be very relaxing and satisfying um, to just see all the nice, easy color changes. So that is how you crochet the indigo blush shawl. Thanks so much for watching and be sure and click the subscribe button to get all the latest Fiberflux video updates. Thanks again.